Hey everybody. <laughs> yeah, I'm making a video. Can you believe it? And it's largely because of what I noticed during the holiday seasons. I noticed a lot of people were making and selling a lot of cutting boards. And they're very popular and very handy. Everybody uses one in their kitchen. But I want to show you today some differences. I think in a year or 18 months, some of the people that bought some of those boards are going to be disappointed. And we're going to talk a little bit about why. We see three different kinds of cutting boards made. We see them made out of face grain, edge grain, and end grain. And that's what I'm going to point out some differences today. And the ones that really kind of got me concerned was how many people were taking just face grain and making it pretty and selling it as a cutting board. I'm glad that anybody can take their woodworking hobby and make a little extra money out of it. It's, it's a wonderful, that's what's great about America. The enterprise system, if there's a supply and demand, that's good. But it's also about repeat customers. Let me ex explain a little bit what I'm talking about. Again, if you don't know the difference between the three, uh, at least if you find that out today, I've helped somebody. But when we look at a board, this is just a piece of maple board. This is face grain. And I see people basically taking a board, sanding it. 220, 320, and, and putting an oil finish on it, and then selling it as a cutting board. That kind of situation, this face grain board, it's good for what they call uh, charcuterie boards, uh, small cheese boards, things of that nature. Serving trays, we could make good serving trays out of face grain, but a cutting board that gets good heavy use every day I won't even make a face grain cutting board because one the, the, the knives cut it up scar it up and you know, cutting boards can be resurfaced that's one thing good about them they can be resurfaced but um, of the three face grain edge grain end grain this is probably my least favorite. As a matter of fact, I won't even make a face grain cutting board. The durability is just not there. So keep that in mind. And again, I've made charcuterie boards out of face grain, some beautiful ones. And, if, and, and, and I make my customers aware, I said, this is not a cutting board. For a, a charcuterie board is, is basically, many of you know this, it's, it's a tray or a board where vegetables and different things are laid out at Christmas parties or holiday parties or whatever, whatever kind of party, Super Bowl parties, whatever it might be. Uh, but I always tell them, this is not a cutting board, so don't treat it as such. That's the first one. The second one I want to talk about is face grain boards. Edge grain boards is, is exactly that. This is the edge grain, face grain, edge grain. We would cut up a bunch of, say, inch and a half thick strips, stand them on their side, glue them all up, so you've got a surface like this, but it's a bunch of these. What's good about it, it's real easy to mix species of wood. Put a row of walnut in, you put a row of cherry in, you put a row, and, and you don't compromise the integrity of the board. Uh, it, it's a it's a good compromise to face grain and end grain boards and we'll talk about end grain in just a minute it's a good way to use scraps uh, in, in your scrap bin in your shop if you got a board that's a small piece it's you know inch and a half by 18 or 24 get a bunch of those you can make a cutting board or edge grain boards that take a little more effort because you have to strip them all out cut all these strips they're a little more durable than face grain boards and again it's a good compromise between face grain and end grain this is my preferred 
method of making because I, I don't like making end grain boards there there seem to be to me more work they're gorgeous but they seem to be more work and again I don't make a face grain board but an, an edge grain cutting board with say walnut in it and maple and cherry uh, it's just uh, it's just gorgeous and you, you don't have any grain problems cross grain problems you're actually gluing up face grain see this is the face grain you glue it up to make your end grain board and, and so you don't have cross grain situations to worry about later on so, so we know now about face grain boards. We know about edge grain boards. Now, let's talk about end grain boards. Now, let's talk about end grain boards. End grain boards, they take a little more effort to make, a little more time, but they're, they're, they're more durable. They heal better. They're easier. They don't show the knife marks is what I mean. So they, they're kind of, I won't call them self-healing, but they don't show knife marks as well and that's because you know the fibers of the wood are running this way so you stand it up on an end so you're actually cutting in in between all the fibers you've seen that example somebody holds a handful of straws and you look down and you see that's kind of what end grain is you can see all the fibers running uh, vertical so you're cutting in between fibers so it doesn't show the knife marks as well it's easier on your knife edges also now you don't want to mix edge grain and end grain or edge grain and face grain you don't want to do that that's that's a recipe for failing you'll have a cutting board that in a little while will be worthless so never don't mix the two you can and i've seen people doing it and i don't do it but you can mix a face grain and an edge grain board say if say this face grain board we would, if we were to cut it in half and then put uh, an, a piece of edge grain like walnut or something into, t into the highlights, I've seen people do that. But uh, I do that. I mix species all the time on edge grain boards, but, uh, and, and I don't make face grain boards. So hopefully that gives you an idea of the difference between face grain boards, edge grain boards, and end grain boards but I'm always happy that woodworkers can sell their products and I hope everybody had a good successful holiday season if you sell your work I know a lot of people that don't they just give it away and I do a lot of that I give a lot of mine away so I hope you got something out of this today some of this was uh, my opinion some of it is based on just woodworking knowledge of, of face grain, edge grain, end grain, and just how they react and how they stand up and the durability. But we're always looking for ways to take our scraps and turn them into uh, a little bit of profit and, and as opposed to burning them in a fireplace. And maybe you can do that with the right kind of cutting board. We appreciate you watching I, I'm so pleased with some of my followers they sending me emails and, and instant messages on Facebook saying we miss you we wish you look for a video soon and I'm trying to get back into it I, I'm gonna retire here in a, in a few months and I've been doing a lot of things in the shop to get ready for that maybe I need a shop update for you guys uh, and uh, but we appreciate, I really do, I appreciate all of those uh, people that reach out to me, ask me how I'm doing, and, and uh, say, we miss you. That, that means a lot. It does. Well, look, I appreciate it again. Thanks for watching. I hope this cleared up any misconceptions about cutting boards. If nothing else, maybe it educated you on when you go to a craft show or a... Or a uh, cooking store or something that you at least are a little bit better equipped when you know what to buy and what to purchase. Everybody, y'all take care. It's been terribly, terribly cold here in Texas for us anyway. It actually got down to zero. My wife asked me the other day, I think it was Tuesday a week ago or something. She says, what's the temperature outside? And I looked, 
There's not one. <laughs> That's rare for Texas. And some of you people, you know, Chicago, Michigan, Seattle, wherever you're from, uh, uh, even Oklahoma, uh, northern parts of Oklahoma. Uh, but Texas just doesn't get this kind of cold. But we endured. We endured. Texas is strong. Again, thanks for watching. Stay tuned here. Be looking for some things. I'm going to try real hard to start making videos again. Thanks, everybody, and everybody, please stay safe.